we welcome you this morning to the Mass of Religious Profession of our Sister Elizabeth of the Trinity. We have two very special guests with us, Mother Ange Nguyen and Mother Rose Nguyen from the Carmel of St. Teresa of Lay, Vietnam. Sister Elizabeth was introduced to Carmel through them. During the profession ceremony, they will accompany Mother Regina in veiling and crowning Sister. Sister Elizabeth's family will be represented by Mother Ange, Mother Rose, Father Joseph Nguyen, and her two cousins who will participate in the offertory procession. Please join in singing our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we gather to celebrate the saving mysteries of our faith, let us begin by first calling to mind our sins and failings, and ask the good Lord for his healing and forgiveness in our lives. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God of mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory. 
to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your Let us pray. Holy God, you have caused the grace of baptism to bear such fruit in your servant, Sister Elizabeth of the Trinity, that she now strives to follow your son more closely. Let her rightly aim at true evangelical perfection and increase the holiness and apostolic zeal of your church. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. In love he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ, in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption by his blood, the forgiveness of transgressions in accord with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight he has made known to us the mystery of his will in accord with his favor that he set forth in him as a plan for the fullness of times to sum up all things in Christ in heaven and on earth. In him you also who have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, which is the first installment of our inheritance toward redemption as God's possession to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Sister Elise. 
Nazareth of the Holy Here I am. The Lord in His gracious love has called me. My sister, what do you ask of God and His Holy Church? Having experienced the joys as well as the cross of following Christ in this community of love, I humbly ask that I may follow myself to the life of Carho until death, so that with my sisters I may spend all my days giving praise to God and offering prayer and sacrifice for the good of all people. Thanks be to God. Divine vocation, everyone here in this chapel by our very baptism. 
that we are called to this intimate communion of life with the Trinity, with God. The evangelical counsels of poverty, chastity, and obedience are above all a gift of the Holy Trinity. The deepest meaning of the evangelical counsels is revealed when they are viewed in relation to the Holy Trinity, the source of our holiness. They express the love of the Son for the Father in unity of the Holy Spirit. And by living the vowed life, you live with particular intensity the Trinitarian and Christological dimension of the whole of Christian life. And what I mean by that? That you witness that the Christian life is one of self-giving love. A love that gives itself away. The fact that your vows are understood in the light of the Trinity reminds me, of course, of St. Elizabeth of the Trinity, whose name you chose for religious life. St. Elizabeth understood her Carmelite vocation in light of the Trinity. She writes in one of her letters, This feast of the three is really my own. For me, there is no other like it. It is really nice and carnal. For it is a feast of science and adoration. I have never understood so well the mystery and the whole vocation in my name. And to another, in another letter to a friend of hers, she wrote, I am Elizabeth of the Trinity. That is, Elizabeth disappearing, losing herself, letting herself be invaded by the three. Of course, Elizabeth of the Trinity, St. Elizabeth, was not a theologian. She did not write a theological treatise on the Trinity. She was a woman of prayer, a mystic who shared her heart, her own experience of God. Just as St. Therese was drawn to the mystery of God as merciful love, for St. Elizabeth and the Trinity, the mystery of God as a dynamic relationship of love who pours himself out and shares life and draws us into communion of life with him, this is what fascinated and inspired her life. I love the way Elizabeth the Trinity explains the Trinity. She simply says, the God of all love. Dieu tout amour, she says. She touches the heart of what we mean when we speak of the Trinity. And that is, God is love. And we have come to know the love that God has for us. And we have believed. The Trinity is God who loves us, God who is for us and with us in Jesus Christ, and who never abandons us because the spirit of love has been poured out into our hearts and remains with us forever. And this is your vocation as a Carmelite nun, to allow the God of all love to invade and penetrate your life. You are called to live in God and for God, in her prayer to the Trinity, her famous prayer to the Trinity, Elizabeth of the Trinity prayed, I surrender myself to you as your prey. Now the word prey is a powerful word. It's a word actually she borrowed from St. Therese, her sister. Elizabeth desired to surrender herself completely to God so that his Holy Spirit would possess her life and transform her into an image of Jesus Christ. And for this she prayed in her offering to the Holy Trinity, O consuming fire, spirit of love, come upon me and create in my soul a kind of incarnation of the Word, that I may be another humanity for him in which he can renew his whole history. And this is what you are doing today by professing your solemn vows. You are surrendering yourself completely to God so that His Holy Spirit can recreate within you another humanity of Jesus Christ. So that through you, Jesus can continue His saving mission in this world. Now this is an important dimension of your contemplative life, of all contemplative life. As you know very well from your study of our Holy Mother Teresa of Jesus, your contemplative vocation is apostolic. You are in karma not for your own salvation, your own holiness alone, but you're here for the salvation and transformation of the world. The concerns of the church and the world 
were at the very heart of the reform of St. Teresa in 1562. St. Teresa wanted her daughters to do battle for the church by their prayer and sacrifice, especially for the leaders of the church, for priests and other leaders of the church, for the suffering church and the world that was on fire with violence, division, hatred, and war. She wanted her daughters to carry the sufferings, pain, and struggles of the world in their hearts and to pray for them. She believed that contemplative love is eternal and transcends space, time, and walls and has the power to heal wounded hearts and transform the environment and the world around us. Contemplative love, she believed, performs a kind of environmental cleanup to heal the hearts of people, the church, and the world. And the more you surrender yourself to God's creative spirit, day by day, in prayer, in loving service to your sisters and community, and the more you bring the needs of the church and the world in your prayer, the more the spirit of love will transform you into another humanity of Jesus Christ, that is, a sacrament of Jesus Christ, and have healed and transform our world. Elizabeth of Trinity, St. Elizabeth, wrote this, The Carmelite is a sacrament of Christ. Everything in her must give him, our God of all love, the crucified God of all love. But in order to give him, she must allow herself to be transformed into the same image with him. And again, she wrote to in a letter, a Carmelite is the soul who has gazed on the crucified, who has seen him offering himself to the Father as a victim for souls, and recollecting herself in this great vision of charity of Christ, has understood the passionate love of his soul and wanted to give herself as he did. In the second reading from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, St. Paul reminds us that you and all of us baptized Christians have been chosen from the very beginning to become holy, immaculate, and to become full of love. In other words, we're called to holiness. And what is holiness? As our Holy Father, Pope Francis, wrote in his apostolic exhortation, rejoice and be glad, holiness is nothing other than charity to the full, the fullness of charity. Our holiness stems from modeling our life on Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. As it is Carmelite nun, your path of holiness consists in joyfully living the vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. And by poverty, you profess that God is your only real treasure. You profess for poverty in imitation of Jesus Christ who became poor so that we may become rich. Poverty expresses your total gift of self to God as your only treasure. And by chastity, you will strive by God's grace to have an undivided heart. Just as the Father was the passion of Jesus' life, your heart belongs to the beloved alone. And this is expressed beautifully in the Song of Songs, My beloved is mine, and I am his. Your vow of chastity witnesses to God's people that ultimately only God can satisfy the human heart made for love. And by obedience, you strive to imitate Jesus, whose food, only food was to do the will of the Father. And that Jesus was obedient to the Father, even unto death. There is, however, an important phrase in St. Paul's letter that we can't bypass because it is the key to your life as a discussed Carmelite like nun and how you can live out your vows. It's also a phrase, as you know very well, that inspired St. Elizabeth of the Trinity and expressed her Carmelite vocation, and that is to be a praise of glory. St. Paul writes, In love he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ, in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise and the glory of his grace, that he granted us in, my, in the beloved. By our baptism and called to holiness, we are all called to the, be the praise of God's glory. And how can we be the praise of God's glory? What does this mean? 
what Central is doing in your sister tells you very, very simply. First of all, to root and center your life in love. To make the love of God and neighbor the very center of your daily life. She believed, as all the saints, that the more we put love into our daily life, the more there will be love in the church and in the world. Secondly, she tells us that we do be a praise and glory is to learn the art of silence, of being still, of listening to the Word of God. Elizabeth Trinity was a musician. She played the, the, the piano for hours, and she learned the art of listening to, to music, to the harmonies. She wrote, A praise of glory is the soul of silence that remains like a liar under the mysterious touch of the Holy Spirit, so that he may draw from it divine harmonies. The piano taught her prepared her for that deeper listening of the Holy Spirit. And she also says in one of her prayers, may I spend my life listening to you, listening to the Word of God. And thirdly, to be a grace of glory is to keep your eyes fixed on God in faith and simplicity, to live a life of faith. And this means that you must try <coughs> to see all that happens in your, in your life through the eyes of faith. Because there will be moments of darkness in your particular life. You will have your ups and downs, your sunny days and stormy days. There may be moments of doubt. This is all part of the spiritual journey and to be expected. In all that happens, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus and rest assured that God's loving presence will never fail you. As Elizabeth said, wrote, He loved you today as He loved you yesterday, and will love you tomorrow. What does it matter how you feel? His love is always there. And fourthly, to be a praise of glory is to always give thanks to God. Learn the art of gratitude for all of God's blessings every day. It's so easy for us to forget to thank God for all of His graces and blessings. The grace of your vocation, the grace of your religious community, and even your gratitude in the midst of difficult times, because in those moments, we learn to depend more completely on God and not on ourselves. I have saved a reflection on the first reading for the last part of the psalm. The bride of Song of Songs, prays, or asks the beloved, set me as a seal on your heart, a seal on your arm. Now, the image of the seal is a profound and appropriate one for your profession, and actually for all of us here. We heard St. Paul tell us in the second reading that the Holy Spirit is the seal, the image of the beloved Son that the Father engraves on the hearts of all believers. In the, in the Apocalypse, Jesus speaks of the seal of the living God placed on the forehead of the servants of God. And in the Song of Songs, the bride sings, my beloved is mine, and I am his. <clears throat> However, the bride is conscious of her fragility and realizes that her fidelity to the beloved depends upon Jesus, who is the faithful one. Therefore, she implores him, set me as a seal on your heart, as a seal on your arm. She asks to be a seal on her beloved's heart, deeply impressed on his heart. She will constantly be with him like a ring on his finger or a jewel around his neck, and as a seal, she will give him joy. She asks the beloved to place her on his heart, and because of this, he will never forget her, nor can she, can she ever forget him. And not only will she never forget him, but she will always accompany him in every place and at every moment. And from that place in his heart, who can separate her from him? Because she will be a seal in his heart. All that she will do in this world, she will accomplish with him and for him. They will be intimate friends and share the same life. And this, my dear sister Elizabeth Trinity, is the meaning of your solemn profession. By your profession, you are sealing your relationship with Jesus Christ. You are asking him to set you as a seal on his heart as they seal his arm. Mm -hmm. Only with his grace can you remain faithful to the intimate relationship 
to which he calls you by your solid profession. He is the faithful one, and he will never abandon you. Let yourself be loved by him, and rest assured that your sisters in this cardinal, your sisters in Vietnam, as well as your family and friends, will always support you by their love and prayers. And one final word from St. Elizabeth the Trinity. Always believe in love and always give thanks. Dear sister, in baptism you have already died to sin and have been set aside for God's service. Are you now resolved to unite yourself more closely to God by the bond of perpetual profession? Amen. Are you resolved with the help of God to undertake the life of perfect chastity, obedience, and poverty chosen for themselves by Christ our Lord? and his virgin mother, and to persevere in it forever. I am. <clears throat> Are you resolved to strive steadfastly for the perfection of love of God and of your neighbor by living the gospel with all your heart and keeping the rule and constitutions of your order? I am. Are you resolved to live for God alone with Mary in solitude and silence, in persevering prayer, and willing penance in humble work and holiness of life. I am. May God who has begun this good work in you bring it to fulfillment before the day of Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Dear friends in Christ, let us pray to God the Father who gives us everything that is good. In his mercy may he strengthen his servant, Sister Elizabeth, in the purpose he has inspired in her. Let us kneel.
Lord, grant the prayers of your people. Prepare the heart of your servants for consecration to your service. By the grace of the Holy Spirit, purify her from all sin and set her on fire with your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us rise. justice, and faith. 
In the fullness of time, you raised up the Holy Virgin from the stock of Jesse. The Holy Spirit was to come upon her, making her the Immaculate Mother of the world's Redeemer. He became poor, humble, and obedient, the source and pattern of all holiness. He formed the Church into his bride, loving it with a love so great that he gave himself up for it and sanctified it in his blood. Father, in your loving wisdom, you have singled out many of your daughters to be disciples, espoused to Christ, and to receive the honor of his love. Holy Church shines with their rich variety, a bride adorned with jewels, a queen robed in grace, a mother rejoicing in her children. Father, we earnestly pray you send the fire of the Holy Spirit into the heart of your daughter, Sister Elizabeth of the Trinity, to keep alive within her the holy desire he has given her. Lord, may the glory of baptism and the holiness of life shine in her heart. Strengthened by the vows of her consecration, may she always be one with you in loving fidelity to Christ, her only bridegroom. May she cherish the church as her mother and love the whole world as God's creation, teaching all people to look forward in joy and hope to the good things of heaven. Lord, Holy Father, guide the steps of your servant. Guard her on her pilgrimage through life. When she comes at last to the throne of Christ the King, may she not fear him as her judge, but hear the voice of her bridegroom lovingly inviting her to the wedding feast of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, bless this veil, they who you with reverence and devotion be drawn ever closer to our Lord Jesus. He has placed a seal upon my forehead so that I may admit no lover but him. Receive this veil as a sign of your consecration, and keep unbroken faith with your heavenly bridegroom. It proclaims that you belong entirely to Christ and to his mystical body. I charge you to be diligent in the holy service to which you have been commissioned by the Church, and which you are to exercise in her name. He has placed a seal upon my forehead, so that I may admit no lover but him. Our sister Elizabeth of the Trinity received the, his crown made of many flowers as a sign of your full incorporation into the Carmelite family and a symbol of the glory to come to those who accept expulsions of the crucified and risen Jesus. We wish you to be one with us in loving unity and to share in our Carmelite heritage and all that belongs to us. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Lord, accept the gifts and the vows of your servant, strengthened by your love, as she professes the evangelical tongue. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. He came, the Son of a Virgin Mother, named those blessed who were pure of heart, and taught by his whole life the perfection of chastity. He chose always to fulfill your holy will, and became obedient even to dying for us, offering himself to you as a perfect oblation. He consecrated more closely to your service those who leave all things for your sake, and promised that they would find a heavenly treasure. And so with all the angels and saints, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. second coming, 
we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Elizabeth and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Lord, strengthen this servant of yours, Saint Elizabeth of the Trinity, in her holy purpose, as she strives to follow Christ your Son in consecrated holiness by giving witness to his love in her religious life. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should have been my word, but I will say the word. May the body of Christ keep us safe from eternal life.
Lord, as we share these sacred mysteries, we pray for this, your servant, who is bound to you by her holy offering. Increase in her the fire of your Holy Spirit, and unite her in eternal fellowship with your Son, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now down to the blessing. God inspires all holy desires and brings them to fulfillment. May he protect you always by his grace, that you may fulfill the duties of your vocation with a faithful heart. Amen. May he make you a witness and sign of his love for all people. Amen. May he make those bonds with which he has bound you to Christ on earth endure forever in heavenly love. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth the man presented. I see you, God. All are invited to greet Sister Elizabeth and to the reception following Mass. The ushers will direct you. Thank you. Please join in singing Salve Regina and our closing hymn. 